Hi, this is Frankie Pace. Every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, The Frankie Pace Show brings you the best eclectic interviews done with comedians, singers, actors, playwrights, musicians, producers, directors, and people of all interest. You can also listen to comedy sketches like Ask the Godfather, Herb and Eddie, Gropa from Sesame Place, Huck and Finn, Pothead Lenny, Words of Wisdom by Habib, Talking with Grandpa, and of course, Frankie's Ranch. We're all here on www.thefrankiepayshow.com. This is Frankie Pace. This is the Frankie Pace Show. My guest tonight is Ron Dell Sheridan, actor, comedian, director. He's best known for his six year portrayal of Chef Victor Baxter, a goofy but lovable father of a psychic teenager, in the Disney Channel sitcom That's So Raven and Corey in the House. Rondell has also appeared in over 200 half hour television sitcoms, and we have him here tonight on the Frankie Pay Show. I know, I know, I know. This is the end of the road. Rondell, how are you, Rondell? What is God? What's going on, man? <laughs> you sound good, brother. It's been a while. It's been a long time. <laughs> Would you just come off a cruise? You've been working cruise ships recently? Or? I was working cruises at home for like four days, and I'm taking off in another four days for about three weeks. I always think about you out here in, um, uh, in L.A. There's a guy, I haven't seen him in a while, but he used to dress, not dress, he, he, he had, it's hard to explain, his hair was, was pointed and he had devil's horns. And I'd heard about this guy. Like, people would call, and, you know, you'd be in a car, and somebody would say, hey, I saw a devil today. But you know we have Jesus in L.A., in, in Hollywood. Uh-huh. This guy who walks around Hollywood dressed like Jesus. Right, right. Uh, long robe, beard. Like, if you saw him, you'd go, oh, that's, that's Jesus. I don't know what he does. So a friend of mine saw Jesus one day at a restaurant, not dressed as Jesus, but she recognized him. Uh-huh. And she said to him, she goes, hey, you're that Jesus guy. And he's downplaying. He's just, you know, trying to play her off. And she's like, how do you play me off when your day job is dressing like Jesus? How do you do that? Anyway, we had this guy who used to, used to go around uh, Hollywood with his hair and these little horn things. And people would say, hey, I saw a double today. And so I finally saw him, like, this was about three, four years ago. And I thought about you, and I was like, yeah, I've seen a better horny little devil guy before. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was walking around and doing my show with the horns on. Maybe they got the idea from that. Who knows? Yeah, but he had his hair like that. It was, it was the weirdest thing. A little red, a little red tip. Was he short like me? Yeah. That was me, man. <laughs> it was me on Melrose Avenue trying to get on at the improv. <laughs> Uh, you sound uh, great, man. You sound great. So things are, things are still going good for you, huh? You doing all right? And they're still laughing at the joke, so you know. Yeah, you've been busy guy, man. Uh, uh, you did that long stint with uh, Disney. How was that for you? It was okay. It was uh, it was a combination of mixed blessings. Uh, it was good to get um, you know to have steady steady work as a as an actor, but as a comic, it didn't you know it didn't help at all because it's you know, I didn't have a kids act. I was still doing my show. No, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I see what you're <laughs> so, saying. Yeah. My manager was like, "Well, can't you get your audience?" come to the show and I got my audience is 14 year old kids right. they're not allowed in the comedy club <laughs> unless you want to bring milk and put milk on a table there you go I, <laughs> I have, you know I always wanted to be that that actor where you get all the sexy sexy women coming up to you but with all the kids coming up to you I always go hey where's your mama she's single where's she at <laughs> well you got another 10 years and you have another big audience man you'll have a reinsurgence that'll be cool I know but I, by that time it'll be old so what you'll still I'll be, be working out in a wheelchair so what? You come out, man, and go, there he is, man, there he is. <laughs> it's Chef Victor. Hey, Chef Victor. <laughs> uh, so so what What stuff did you produce? You were producing stuff, some stuff, too? or No, I do this, uh, I work, I do these short films with um, uh, the John D'Aquino uh, um, uh, acting school. Mm-hmm. We just got to finishing a couple shorts, and 
uh, uh, editing them. If you go, if you if you're bored and you're at home and you want to go to RondellSheridan.com, you can go check out the shorts that we do. They're really well produced. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's what I was doing. We shot those uh, Halloween week, and uh, we're going to put some new ones up. Now, how many of those do you have going? Um, we shoot twice a year, sometimes three times a year. Oh yeah, oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's cool. Big production, big. Big whole thing, yeah. So you live in that big L.A. life, huh? That big L.A. lifestyle? Yeah, I don't know if it's a big L.A. life. I live in L.A. I miss New York, though, man. That's right. funny, because growing up in Chicago, mm -hmm. um, I like the big city, but um, L.A. doesn't feel like a big city. Yeah, where'd you start in Chicago? Did you start at the... Uh... I didn't. I started, I started in New York. I came to, uh, from Chicago. I, I, went to, uh, I went to Marquette University in Milwaukee, uh -huh. and then I got accepted to acting school. I got accepted to the Circle in the Square in New York. And so uh, I drove out, went to Circle for a year, and uh, I met um, I met this girl, and one of my classmates' sister was a stand-up comic, and so I'd never met her before, and I met this girl at this party, and we just kind of clicked. And uh, later on, it turned out to be one of my classmates' sister. Her name was Vanda Michaels. I don't know if you knew Vanda. Well, Vanda no. Michaels, sure. Um, but I had a huge crush on Vanda. Uh -huh. One day to day, you know, they call it stalking. <laughs> and I just had a crush on her, and I followed her everywhere, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we used to go down to Mostly Magic uh, in Manhattan, and um, then I think the big guy there was Dan Vitale. Yeah. Um, but everybody else had been doing stand-up comedy m maybe a year, year and a half. Susie Essman, I saw her the first time she went on stage. And so I kept going there for about three months, and finally Vanda said, you know, you're funny, you should, you should try it. And yeah. It got me started. You praise yourself on being uh, very clean in the Cosby mode. With and, uh, corporate wise and cruise wise, but you know it's it's a weird. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's other comics like me. I'm sure. Oh yes, there are. There are. But, there are. Uh, able to do the you know able to do Conan and and Ferguson and all that stuff. Able to do corporate dates. Able to do the cruise concert dates. But when I'm working when I'm working a club, it is such the regular club act that you'd expect right right just figured out how to clean things up to do them in a huge concert wise but when i do clubs it's still the regular club so when, when you're on a ship though don't they split the acts up now they give you you got to do like a half hour family show <clears throat> then they have an hour club show is that how that works you... it all depends on what cruise line you're on <clears throat> i know that i'm getting ready to do the oasis on saturday mm -hmm. the oasis has um uh, Royal Caribbean, it's, it's the lar they have the two of the largest cruise ships in the world. And they have a comedy club there, and we do two shows a night, half-hour show. And uh, it's 18 and over, so you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, so that well, what, about, what about the main room? Don't they call you up there? Don't you have to do the main room, too? No, no. <clears throat> main room is completely different. The, the great thing about the ship, the only comedy on the ship is in the club. Ah, I see. And all the other, like, they either have their production shows or they have singers, but yeah. they don't have any comedy in the main show. So they're bringing the city to the to the ship, actually. They're, yep, they're, yep. And, because they're doing That's that. kind of funny. The only drawback is there's two shows a night. They're doing that with restaurants, too, aren't they? They're having, like, segregated restaurants now. Hey, wait, what did you say about segregated? I mean, segregated. <laughs> Yo, brother, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that kind of segregated. I didn't mean that kind of segregated, man. I was talking about segregated from the main, you know, the main restaurant. I'm talking about. Oh yeah, they got they got every kind of fancy restaurant you could imagine. Yeah, I mean the guy with the uh, that goes uh, diners, dives, and something. He's on TV. He's got Jimmy something. I forget his name. He's got a a, a, a slew of restaurants in there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, even Subways, I think, are on there. Uh, they have Subways, yeah, too? Yeah, no, they got Johnny Rockets. They got Johnny Rockets on the ship that I'm going to, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, you, why wouldn't you think that there can't be any more food on the cruise ship? There is more food. <laughs> they still have those tremendous plates where you can, you can actually go surfboarding on those plates? No, they just, basically, they give you, you know, like when you break something and you get the little whisk broom and the little dustpan? Mm-hmm. I saw a guy one day. I mean, some of these people come on, and they've got rear ends the size of Montana. Oh my God, they're huge! Like I, I, I have a uh, a lot of women friends that are in their forties, and they think that they go, "Oh my God, I'm fat," and I go, "No, you have no. not been fat. <laughs> you go on a cruise ship. Come on, ship. America looks like, and I go, "Yeah, then, yeah, no." 
And a lot of them are riding on those uh, three-wheel uh, little riders. And, uh, those things are everywhere, yeah. flying up and down all over the place. I'm surprised, yeah. I, I'm surprised the cruise director doesn't have a race one day, man. <laughs> well, that would actually be a good idea. That's actually a good idea. Like, Today is race day. Get your big butts up here. and uh, You know who was in a, one of those chairs? Remember Mark Rossi? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mark, is, uh, he, he got so big, I think he hit like 360 and his knees went. Oh, my God, and, I figured by then he would have got one of those staples. Oh, God, he should have, but he's he's in one of those three-wheelers, and he's happy now because he could eat more. Oh, uh, That's man. so sad. I saw him the last time I was up there. Well, I, was, I saw him about well a couple of years ago. I said, Mark, what are you doing? Ah, I could eat more, man. I was like, holy crap. He was a, he was a big dude back then. That was tw- it's been like 30 years since I've seen him. Oh yeah, he's tremendous. He's uh, just a shame. I, I you know, he guy loves guy loves food. What are you gonna do? Well, what's his last name? Rossi. What's his last name? Rossi. Uh, Italian food gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like his last name was Jones Smith. <laughs> his DNA was already predetermined. Uh, like you squeeze his DNA out, it's gonna be tomato sauce that's gonna come out of there. Doctor's like, you got no choice. I'm sorry. You're fat. You're Italian. <laughs> Hey, hey man, that's so what they're gonna do. You gotta eat it. This is stuff. It's good for you, you know. So, uh, how was it working on the Late Late Show with Ferguson? He's a pretty cool guy, huh? Ferguson was great. I've known Craig for a long, long time. I knew him when he first came out. Uh, my manager used to manage him, and so he had uh, he had just did a uh, film that he wrote, trying to figure out. It was it, it was kind of cool seeing a, a comic come to the states because. Um, what is Craig? Scottish? Scottish? Yeah, he's, um, I think he's Scottish, yeah. And, uh, the, you know, the network's trying to figure out what they were going to do with him. Mm-hmm. Trying to figure out which show they were going to put him in, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it took them a while, but, you know, he worked a, a while with, um, uh, what's the name who's hosting The Price is Right right now? What can I think of it? Um, oh, I know, the blonde-headed guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, That's how we are today. We don't remember names, just no, faces no, and hair. Yeah. The guy with the water on his nose. Yeah. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, but then uh, that was like a, around when Bob Costas was leaving his show. Wait a minute. I'm thinking of Wheel of Fortune. That's how stupid I am. No. Uh, the stand up comic. He used to wear glasses. Yeah. He doesn't wear glasses anymore. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He has an yeah. uh, uh, improv show on TV, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. We know. He had his own. He had his own. Uh, sitcom. Yep, 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 yep. And we don't know his name. <laughs> Drew Carey. Drew, I was going to say Drew, and then I couldn't forget the last name. I, yeah. went, I went through this with John Coffey. Do you know John Coffey? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. John Coffey and I were trying to figure out who Anthony Quinn was for 15 minutes. We went oh through everything you can think of. It, it got to the point I couldn't stop laughing because it was so stupid. Then I got Anthony Quinn's photo on the website, and, I, and it didn't have his name underneath. It was even worse. <laughs> Mexican. Yeah, right, right. He That's played. That's the thing that would throw everybody off. They go, he's Mexican. Wait, who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, he was the guy that married uh, Kennedy's uh, wife. Remember that guy? He owned the ships, and uh, it was getting right. It was getting too wacky, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this thing? Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Uh, uh, that was man. That was the best job I ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, you were I a host talk show for about six months. Yeah, you hosted that. Uh, yeah. Originally, it was um, uh, uh, a talk show. That Sybil Shepherd did was the uh, it was called Sybil, uh-huh. and then I was on Sybil's show maybe about four times, just as a just as a guest, just a funny guest on. Yeah, and uh, I kept watching the show, and at the time the show was Men Are From Mars, Women Are From uh, Venus, hosted by Sybil Shepherd, and I had said to one of the producers, I said, you know, I got, I go, I'm a nobody, but I have a couple ideas for this show. I said, um, there's not a guy on this show. Um, you know, you got Sybil, but there's no man on the show. Right. You know, the show's called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Right. And Sybil would say some outrageous stuff about men, and I said, there's nobody to call her on it. Mm. You need another guy on the show. And I said, I'm not looking, you know, to steal any of Sybil's time. I said, you know what would be really cool is, because she always had questions for the audience. Yeah. Uh, and I said, why, why can't it be the sidekick? Why can't I be the guy that holds the microphone? when she goes into the audience, and that way at least I can give her a little, you know, feedback back and forth. Yeah. And so I didn't know what was going on with her contract, but uh, out of nowhere, um, her contract was up, and so they put together a little dream team. It was Dr. Drew, uh, um, 
Sam Phillips, um, Bo Griffin, and uh, man, I can't think of the other um, Christine Ferrar. And we had a really great time. We did that. We did that for about almost a year, about three quarters of a year. What network were you on when you did that? Oh, that was syndicated. Syndicated. We're oh, okay. on every. We're kind of the. We're basically the View with two guys. Oh, okay. But we were uh, some places. We were opposite the View. Some places we were on the afternoon. Some places we were on like at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, but that gig was the most fun. And there was another one. Uh, sh- uh, show me the funny. Show me the funny. That was um, two shows. That was I did. Show me the funny, and that's funny which were both Vinda Bona shows, which Vinda Bona does uh, America's Funniest Videos. Yeah, he does all those crazy shows. <laughs> yeah, so we basically had all the bootleg videos that uh, America's Funniest Video didn't use mm-hmm. for that show. You know, I won that stupid show. You did? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was between me and a llama in a tuxedo. <laughs> what, was your, what was your video? Uh, I did the sneeze in space with the wire. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and and I'm going. Oh my god! I'm on this stupid show. Millions of people are watching, and I'm going to lose to a llama. Oh my god! Because <laughs> the llama did they they did like a voiceover. That he was a mobster. They dressed him up as a in a suit with a cigar and something. So I'm uh, si- I'm sitting there. I'm cr- you know I'm sweating bullets, man. <laughs> then they call my name out. I was like, whoa! That was that was unbelievable. Wow! Yeah. Uh, Dave Coulier was the host of that show. Yep. And uh, who was it? Uh, oh, God, I can't think of the comic. It was the warm-up comic again. Uh, the crazy hair and the mustache. Here we go again. Alzheimer's. No, that one I don't know. Uh, yeah. You would know him if I mentioned his name. Oh, okay. Anyway, so you got this out. You got to see the out. It's called Banana and a Gun. What's that all about? You banana and a Gun? Hmm. Uh, it is very funny. You must buy the CD. People in Africa really love the CD. Yeah, I like the Jamaican bit with the... Uh, <laughs> the nude beach? Yeah. Go into the nude beach. <laughs> I like the one where the pilot's going to take off, but he can't... Can you look out the window and you see smoke coming out of his window? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I don't know what took me so long to get a CD out. I've done so many, uh, so many comedy specials that I was never thinking about my own self-promotion. Yeah. And I uh, just been recently, the past couple of years, I was talking to a bunch of comics, and they're like, dude, you should get a CD out. So uh, that was my goal for uh, 2011. So what do you have? Is it on CD Baby and uh, iTunes? It's CD Baby, iTunes, and uh, Amazon. Oh, cool. And through my website, if you go to RondoSheridan.com. Okay, that's not bad. So how'd you, how'd you like doing a Tonight Show? with? Uh, you did it once with Carson. That must have been unbelievable. Carson was fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was... Uh, it was the dream come true. It's like I have I have two things, two goals that I uh, wanted to do, want to do. Uh, one of them was to do The Tonight Show, and that was comedy related. The only reason I got into comedy was to do The Tonight Show with Johnny. Right. And the other is to write a slow jam like Always and Forever by Heat Wave. That's mm. it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that'll never happen, but that's my, that's my musical goal. Yeah, you'll get there. You can get there. <laughs> Don't worry about it. uh, The whole Tonight Show thing was uh, just a fluke. Not a fluke, but I had a friend of mine from uh, from New York who was friends with um, uh, uh, Macaulay, who Mm -hmm. was the uh, entertainment director there. And she said, "Yeah, if you go to if you go to uh, L.A., uh, just give Macaulay a a call and tell him you're my friend, and no, he'll come see you." And I go, "Okay." Jim Macaulay. Think about it. I wish I could think of the comic Uh, John John Ross. John Ross? Yeah, the, uh, so I call up Macaulay, and Macaulay says, hey, I'm going to be at the Tonight Show, I mean, I'm going to be at the Improv, I'm going to see John Ross, um, if, um, if you can go on either before him or after him, I'll come and see you. If not, then you got to set up some other time. Yeah. I go, okay, and by then, I would already done, you know, like you also, we had done everything at the beginning of our careers, because this was 1990, for, um, for Carson, right. we'd, we'd already done all the beginning stuff for the comedy. At the time, it was the Comedy Channel. It wasn't Comedy Central. It was the Comedy Channel. So we had done every TV show there, and then uh, Comic Strip Live was already out, even at the Improv. I'd already done all these national shows, but my goal was still was to do the Tonight Show. So I had tons of tape to bring in the show. And um, 
So that night I went to the improv. He was talking, uh, I saw Macaulay when I walked in, was talking to John Ross, and I didn't say anything. I just went on, uh, going through my set, had a great set, mm-hmm. out, and I went home. I didn't think about it. I'm like, I'm not going to, you know, sit around and suck up, whatever. I'm just yeah, out. yeah, yeah. So at the time, I came out to L.A. just on a look-see. I came out for about four months, and my roommate at the time was Janine Garofalo, and Jeff Garland, okay? Mm-hmm. So, so I get home that afternoon. I went to the gym, went to play basketball, come home about 1 o'clock, and the moment I walk in the door, Garland's there, and he's like, dude, where have you been? The Tonight Show called. I'm like, yeah, shut up. He goes, no, I'm serious. The Tonight Show called. He wants you to come by right now. I'm like, stop it. Stop it. He goes, no, seriously, here's the number. This guy called you twice. So I call, and McCauley, and McCauley's like, where were you last night? And I said, well, I saw you talking to John, and, uh, you know, I took off. He goes, he goes, can you come by? And I go, yeah. He goes, bring your tapes. So we sit, and I didn't know the drill for the Tonight Show. We sit, and I show him a tape, and he goes, show me something else. And he goes, huh? show me something else. And all the time, he's watching the tape, and he's like, huh, that's funny. Right, huh, that's right, funny. Right. And finally, he turns to me and goes, are you writing this down when I say that's funny? And I go, no, I hadn't thought of it, but I'll start writing it down now. Mm-hmm. So when it was over, I remember this thing. Remember that magazine called Just for Laughs that came yep. out of San Francisco? Yep, yep. It was like a newspaper kind of a thing. Right. On the cover of that newspaper, they did this article on Jonathan Winters. And uh, I was a huge fan. I think most comics were. I'm a huge fan of Jonathan Winters. And so we're upstairs in Macaulay's office at the Tonight Show, and we walk downstairs, and at the bottom of the stairs is Jonathan Winters, who's going to be on the show that night. <laughs> and Jonathan Winters says something to me that is a complete non sequitur. To this day, I can't remember what he said. He could have said, man, I got hot dogs in my shoe, whatever he said. <laughs> and I just went with him. Jonathan and I start riffing for like five minutes <laughs> on this non sequitur that he said. And it's just two of us. We're not riffing like for an audience. Yeah, yeah. We are just riffing on this tangent. And my brain is just screaming, just keep up, just keep up. <laughs> and that was the coolest thing I remember. So I get back. Uh, home and I see uh, John John Ross at the club, and he goes, "What happened to you last night?" Uh, he goes, uh, uh, "He goes, Macaulay was only talking about you." And I said, "I thought he was talking about your, your Tonight Show set." He goes, "No, he was just talking about you." He goes, "Did you get the show?" And I go, "How the hell do I know?" And he goes, "Well, what did you do in his office?" And I said, "I just watched. We watched my tapes, and he thought stuff was funny." He goes, "Dude, he's putting together your Tonight Show set already. You got the Tonight Show. Trust me." Mm. And about mm. three weeks later, I got the call. It goes, you got your date? It was May, I think it was May 12th. And that was it, man. Did you get to do panel with uh, Johnny? No, no. I, uh, I, you know what? I was more than happy. Uh, I, had, I had like, in five and a half minutes, I had like 12 applause breaks. It was the best TV set I've ever had. Yeah. And uh, when it was over, I got the, you know, the okay from Johnny. And you could see on the tape when it fades out, Johnny says, yeah, that's really great to see a comic first time go out like that. Uh, and then I went back to New York, and I was in New York for a couple months, and Macaulay called me up, and it was the funniest thing. He goes, what are you doing on such and such date? And I didn't even have my calendar. I go, whatever I'm doing on that date, obviously I'm going to cancel, because you're calling me about the Tonight Show. Right, right. And, and so he goes, well, let me call you back. He goes, don't hold in stone yet. Let me call you back, and uh, um, uh, I'll let you know if it works out. So I go out and buy a suit. I'm already buying a Tonight Show suit. I'm already set. <laughs> and so I get back, and uh, he left a message. He goes, it's not going to work out, but we'll get you back. We'll definitely get you back. And then I think about three months later, I moved to uh, L.A., and this is at the end of, uh, of uh, 1990. And then the next four months later, Johnny announced his retirement. And I think every comic knew that was it, unless you're a really big comic. The odds of you getting on during that last, you know, nine months of farewell for Johnny. Yeah. Something yeah. really hard, but I was happy to do that. And then doing it with Jay Leno was just cool, because I'd always seen Jay around, and Jay was always a nice guy, so it was great. How was the, the Conan O'Brien show? How was that working out? Uh, Conan was really fun, especially, um, I did Conan twice, three times, I'm trying to remember. I think I did it twice. And uh, the second time I did it, they were almost going to have to cancel the show, because uh, Conan was sick. Uh-huh. And... Uh, they said he's got, he had laryngitis, and they said, okay, we don't really know if we're going to cancel the show, or they said, we might have you do panel, because you'll do your five minutes stand-up, and then maybe we'll have six minutes of panel, 
so that you could do more talking so that Conan doesn't have to talk. Right. So I wound up doing the panel, and it, you know, by that time I'd done so much TV that doing that panel was just, it was just really great. Um, and Conan was, uh, Conan was a great, you know, you know how you get a great host that just laughs and does your setups everywhere perfectly. Right. So that was great. And I had this really simple joke um, that Conan didn't realize, you know, because they don't see what you're going to say. They just ask you the question. Right. And so I go, I had this really great joke and, uh, that just got him. And I said, why is it that the word ambulance is written backwards on an ambulance? And so Conan goes, so you can read it backwards in your rearview mirror. And I said, so Conan, you mean to tell me that if, if you couldn't read it backwards, you'd have no clue that there is a large emergency vehicle <laughs> behind you with the lights flashing. <laughs> and he just fell into it so perfectly. It just that's left so that's hard. funny, man. It is funny, don't you think about it? That is funny. <laughs> it, was just, it was the perfect setup. I was like, yeah, you did that. We're great. So life is treating you pretty good now. Are you married? You settle in? What do you got kids? What are you doing? No kids. That was my, girl, that was my girlfriend that you, uh, uh -huh. you, that you heard that uh, when you called earlier to answer the phone, GG. Uh, my girlfriend is teeny, it's not a joke, my girlfriend is 4'10", uh, she's a garden gnome, basically. Uh, I think I once had a, we had a, we had a yard sale and somebody tried to buy her. <laughs> Only teeny. You're almost white, what are you, about 5'9"? Uh, excuse me, I am 5'11 on a good day. <laughs> oh, God, that's a, that's a little off there, man, how do you, how do you maneuver? <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be fun when you're, you know, getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that, but I, I, I had a joke the first time she had a sleepover here. Uh, I actually lost her in bed. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm king size bed. It's a huge bed. She's 4'10". You know, like you stick your leg and you try to find the person you're with? Right, right. I'm moving my leg. All, I thought she left. I thought she left. I'm like, holy crap. That was, it must have been bad. She left. She's just in the corner like a cat just sleeping in the corner. Of the bed. Uh, where'd you meet her, Rondell? I met her, you know, it's a funny thing. I met her on a cruise um, because she's a travel agent and she's a, she's more of like a, a, a cruise concierge. Uh. She brings groups of people on mm -hmm. world cruises. And then she sets up all the tours. She goes with you? Them. Do you work with her? Do you work together on the cruises? or is it? No, no. She's got her own agenda. I, you know, I told her when I met her. I said, you know what? This is God playing a cruel trick on me. He goes, I'm finally going to let you meet the woman of your dreams. <laughs> Unfortunately, she travels as much as you do. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But it's a good relationship. You get you got plenty of room, man. You can relax. You can do your thing. You can have your little man cave in your head, you know. Yeah, we're always happy when we sit back and go, I can't believe you're home. Like, you know, I'm like, I can't believe you're home. Ah, uh, cool, man. Good. That's good. That's good. Well, listen, I want to wish you a lot of luck, and I think it's great that you're still doing comedy and enjoying yourself, and you're going to be on these cruise ships. What's, what's the major lines? Any any line or just uh... I work. Uh, I work for five different lines, Princess, Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Holland America, and Royal Caribbean. Oh, cool. And uh, what's, what's the name of that uh, uh Banana and a gun. Banana and a gun. And, Rondell uh, Sheridan, Banana Gun, iTunes, Amazon, <laughs> Baby, or RondellSheridan.com. All right, man. That's cool, man. Listen, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's great to hear your voice again, brother. Thank you. I like the music at the beginning. Who is that? Uh, Luther Vandross. Oh, look yeah. at you. Yeah, I play for the brothers, man. Look <laughs> at you. Did you ever run into, Bar ever run into Barry Berry at all? Oh, man, I haven't seen Barry Barry in a long time. I used to see him, forgot what show I was doing, that I used to see Barry, Barry for a while. And then when I uh, I did a guest, this is years ago, on Jimmy Fox show, Barry was on that show. Yeah, Barry's, Barry was one of the writers for uh, Living Color for the folks out there. He used to yeah. write with, uh, he used to write with Franklin Ajay. They wrote the Homeboy Shopping Network uh, routine. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was a funny bit, man. <laughs> Listen, you take care of yourself, and thanks for coming on the show and uh, giving up some of your time. I know you're a busy cat, man, and enjoy the little woman, <laughs> and uh, have a great life, and take care, and uh, I'll talk to you again, man. You got it, man. I'll talk to you. All right, take care. That was Ron Del Chevening. You can get his, uh, his uh, CD. It's called A Banana and a Gun. It's on iTunes. It's on uh, uh, CD Baby, and uh, it's everywhere. It's, it's good, and it's funny. I listen to it. It's very funny stuff.